Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Is Jesus a socialist? One has to wonder if you read the first reading today. But I'd like to beg that there is a different message that is being said. So let's read the reading first, and don't worry, this will not be a political podcast. On the contrary, it'll be something quite different. I think you might be surprised. Okay. The reading is Acts, chapter 4. It starts at verse 32. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bringing the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to their need. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple. Sounds like socialism to me. But the key point in this entire reading, this entire chapter, is they were a community of the likeness. They had the same heart and mind. That's a big differentiator. In socialist societies, the government takes your money. And who knows where it may go? In this community, they all have the same loving heart, caring mind, helping one another. Nobody was in need. That is what Jesus wanted. And I would say he wanted a community. He didn't want a, a government name or anything that ran society. He wanted a community of people who loved one another and who cared about one another. And if we all live that way, it would be so different. Let me give you a couple of examples in my very own life or people that I know, because there is one of another one that I didn't, that is not my life, but a friend of mine. So you remember when I was having all those neck pains and Oh gosh, I was like laying down basically on my bed, flat on my back, my neck, my shoulders, my arms, they were tingling and oh, it was just brutal. I couldn't even move, crying all the time. And after a while, I started to get better, but I had mentioned that I was trying to find some help, but I didn't have insurance and I didn't have a lot of money to go pay for anything. I was tapping on an arm of a chiropractor guy that I knew and I got this email from someone who happened to come see me speak way back in 2018. And she said, you know, the Lord put on my heart to reach out to you. This may be very weird, but I am a chiropractor and I heard about your neck and I would be more than happy to help. And then maybe we could barter. Maybe you can come to me for chiropractic help and I can get some coaching from you. I remember running down, (laughs) I wasn't quite running. I remember I was pretty excited, but I ran to my husband and I said, dude, check this out. This person just sent this to me. And he's like, that's so cool. I said, yeah, should we meet? And he's like, yeah. So I did. 
I mean, it took a while. It was a very interesting Holy Spirit moment. It was like, okay, something happened. Then she got sick, her kids got sick, and then some time went by. And then out of the blue, I remember I couldn't remember her name and I couldn't find the email, but I just trusted God. I said, well, God, if you want this to happen, she'll find me, she'll reach out. And it was quite a few weeks before I heard back. And we laugh about how we let the Holy Spirit just find the right time. And then when we met, like, honestly, I could have been walking into a murderer's home. My husband, I was there for almost two hours chatting and getting to know this person. And she was, you know, examining me and all that kind of stuff. We had a wee bit of a coaching session. It was insane because my husband never had a worry I didn't even have a text from him. I mean, two hours with me not saying anything, he wasn't even the least bit worried and I could have been murdered or dead or whatever. But that is the whole point. It's like when you have like-minded people with the same heart and the same mind, right, who want to help one another, that is a community. That's what Jesus wanted. I remember, here's my friend's story. My friend's husband is a dentist, and they needed masonry work on their fireplace. And one guy was a masonry and needed dental work, so they did a trade. This is why we're all made differently. This is why we all have different talents. This is why I need help with technical things, but I can help out on creative things or marketing. It's, it's amazing when I think about the skills that I need in my life that other people have, but we never think about, and maybe I have something that they need, you know? I was even thinking, gee, should I put something out there? Is there a masseuse somewhere around this area that I could do trade with? <laughs> because I would love to have a massage, but I don't want to pay massage envy prices and it would be even more great, gratifying for me to service your soul and your heart on the journey than to give someone money. And that may be worth something to someone else. I don't know. It's just this kind of logic where I think about my husband, who's a handyman. He can do everything. But one of his unfavorite things to do is electric work. And so if he could find someone who had electric work and he could do other stuff for them, it would be an awesome trade. That is what Jesus wanted. How many of you even know your neighbors or what they do well? Or how can you help one another out? Even if it's not a trade, you could say, hey, I'll watch your kids for a while if you and your husband want to go out and have a nice night out. And maybe they cut your grass or bake you some cookies or something for an event that you have because you don't have a baking bone in your body. As, as much as we can share with people around us what it is that we desire and we need, it may not be that person who helps us. It could be somebody else who they know, who said, you know what? You should talk to a friend of mine and maybe there's something you can work out there. This is why living in a community like Jesus established from the very beginning, you get to know people in such an, a different way. And you're all loving Jesus. You're all loving one another. You've got the Holy Spirit in the group because clearly the apostles were blessed. All these people are selling all of their stuff and giving it to them because they are part of a greater good. And don't let those greater good words trick you in certain socialism and or communism type of philosophies and societal political norms, right? That's They've bastardized, they've perverted God's plan and they tweak it and they make it seem like, okay, we're all going to take care of the poor and all that kind of stuff, but that never ends up working. They're still poor. They're still homeless. How can that be in these 
specific societies, countries, etc. But I'm not going political. What I am going about is community. Look at where you live. Do you know your neighbors? Many people don't. They all keep very much alone and to themselves. And when God says, love your neighbor as yourself, he literally means that guy and gal or whoever is living right next door to you. So let's be a little bit more open and welcoming and vulnerable with our needs. Because again, if I didn't share what was going on with me and the Holy Spirit didn't put in this person's heart to reach out to me for help, I may have not been making good progress or just living with a little bit of pain and just waiting for it to happen again. We all need help in life and we all have skills in life. So let's be open to asking for help or asking others if they know of anyone who can help. Gosh, I just think about how awesome it would be if we all lived in that same mindset. I'm looking at when I go down to Tennessee, who knows when that will be. Prices are just way too high, so we've kicked the can down the curb, the street, whatever, another six months to see where prices are at. <laughs> it's just not pretty. There's, It's insane. But I keep thinking when we go down there and I grow this garden, which I'm not so good at. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a shot. I don't know if we'll have chickens, but maybe, I know for a fact, our neighbors do. So maybe there could be a trade of vegetables for eggs. And then I was thinking, well, maybe there's a, a dairy farm somewhere or a place where we can buy meat. We currently have a rancher out in Nebraska, but we thought maybe something more local where we could get different kind of meat. You know, we get beef from him. Maybe we can get chicken or pork or something like that. And we're just trying to, again, live like that. We may have to, in that case, pay for it, but it's all about the local community. And I guess my whole point here is to ask you, how well do you know just the people in your proximity? And if you could get involved in your community, I don't know politically if that's what you want to do, but maybe you want to pull together a farmer's market for your town because there's a lot of people who grow vegetables. I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with this. I just feel sad that this is not how we live. We don't live this way. And we should because that's the way that God wanted us to. Think about it. If everyone was there to help everyone. I think about it out in the ranch. I'm actually going this weekend. It's branding. So that's where they take the baby cows and they put the brand on them. It's a very interesting experience. I went last year and I'm going again. But everybody that they know comes in from everywhere to help. Nobody gets paid. But it's a community because you need people to help. And then, of course, people hunt on his property. That's where my husband goes to hunt deer. And we obviously buy meat from him at a massive discount from the grocery stores, and it's wonderful, but that is how it's supposed to work, and it just doesn't today. So I'm sad about that, but I think that we can be that and bring that to the people that we know and we love and not be shy to ask for help, put it out there on social media, or ask a few friends for things that you need. And again, if you don't have the money to have it, maybe you have some other offering. I mean, I could offer to clean somebody's house. I'm not a professional cleaner, but darn it, I am good. <laughs> I am wicked particular. It is crazy how insane I get when I clean. And I could offer that to someone. Hey, I'll come clean your house top to bottom. That may, again, not be my quote unquote skill that I like to do, but I can do it for someone. 
that's where I want us to just remember that community living, like-minded people, meet some of them, go to your parish events, extend yourself to get to know some of these people that have the same heart and mind as you do and start building those spiritual communities and companions so that you have somewhat of that in your life. Love your neighbor as yourself. (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to throw this out there. If there's anyone in the Chicagoland area that is a masseuse or would like to have coaching as an exchange for a massage every now and then, I am totally there. (laughs) All right. That's the one thing that I was thinking of because it's expensive to go get a massage. And I would rather help someone on their spiritual journey get closer to God than to exchange a dollar for a service, if you if you catch my drift. Okay, anyway, God bless you to the person who reached out and who asked, who listened to the Holy Spirit and asked if I wanted their help. Because that took a lot. She didn't know me. I didn't know her. And I know that there was a reason that we were put together way back in 2018. It's wonderful when you look at God working right in your very own life in the crazy ways that he does. So let's go be love. Let's go find some like-minded and heart-minded people in some communities at our parishes or online. And let's live loving our neighbor and helping them as much as we can. That's how this world is supposed to work and look how backwards it is. Oh, all righty, everyone. I love you all. Go find something more with God and have a blessed and inspired day.